Media well, he moment. covers your story. Your story will be covered from the ground up. All right, we're back for an all-new episode of The Jason Lee Show. Now, you know, I tell y'all, every time I do an interview with somebody that I'm actually friends with, it's going to be wild. Well, this person came on my show a long time ago, and it was the most reckless but enjoyable, appetizing podcast I had ever had. Actress, um, podcaster, YouTuber, and LGBT, um, heavy on the T, uh, advocate, T.S. Madison. Welcome to the show. Yes! Oh, Jason, oh, this is nice. It's giving budget, right? It's giving real budget. Listen, we came a long way. Everybody that don't know, so T.S. has been a friend of mine for a long time. And I remember early on when I started wanting to go on YouTube, mm -hmm. people would call me and say, yo, you got to get with T.S. Madison. Mm -hmm. um, you got to do something with T.S. Madison. I, you know, we hadn't connected and gotten familiar with each other. Finally, we did. And I feel like once you came on the old Hollywood Unlocked mm -hmm. podcast, you changed a lot of things for me. I always give you credit for opening my eyes to the trans community mm -hmm. and the movement, mm -hmm. um, being able to educate me in a way that was funny but also informative, uh -huh. and then have the most reckless time with that Puerto Rican story. Oh, yes, because that was the real story. That story really happened. And, and, and here's the thing. The people are still quoting, I felt like a spin. I felt like a Puerto Rican Rickon, honey. Ooh. But it's the straight men that are taking the audio and making it on there. Have you seen them? Yeah, I see Snoop Dogg posters all the time. So Snoop, I, Snoop Dogg, like everybody posts that that uh, that soundbite, like and they and sometimes they don't even know where it originated from. Uh -huh. And it's so funny to me when people be like, "I ain't never heard of her." I'm like, "No, you have." Yeah, you've heard of it. You you have to go. You have to go to the YouTube channel, Hollywood Unlocked YouTube channel, and look up the interview with T.S. Madison on the podcast before. It's so reckless and raw. Funny. No, I cry, I literally cried tears when you were telling the story about the Puerto Rican man in Miami. Now what I do is when I see that uh, um, the Harris Puerto Rican sound, I go and click it on Instagram, and it shows every Puerto Rican man who does the sound. It be some fine ass motherfuckers over there because it's some fine Puerto Ricans. Rickin', right. honey. When you go viral, when you come up with these viral moments, is this something that you think about, or is it just the uh, God given talent? No, I'm gonna tell you. Every time uh, something goes viral, or some video, or some sound bite, or whatever goes viral for me, and this is gonna sound crazy. I am deeply rooted in uh, my background and being loving the Lord, God. Mm -hmm. Regardless of me having a titties at the top and dick at the bottom, I love the Lord. And so the Lord, I, the Lord bless you with both. It, and the Lord blessed me with both of them. Mm -hmm. Well, He blessed me with, with the bottom. But, but He blessed you with the money to he, be able to get the to, top. to get the top. Hi, y'all, double shata. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any time that there's a video that has went viral or a sound about this one or me addressing something, which we're going to talk about today, the, the, the Lord has told me to do it. The spirit has been in my ear saying, do it. And if I've done a video and I'm doing it over and over until the spirit says, this is the one. Mm -hmm. My break in through mainstream social mainstream media came from Vine when new wave, new wave, 22 <laughs> inches. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And on and. Fortunately and unfortunately, I was displaying my naked body. So this is why when I'm always talking about, I met so many people at the front door of me being naked. I've always stood 10 toes down in me being a transgender woman, mm -hmm. transsexual, transgender, the, the T word that you can't use. I've stood 10 toes down in being that. And so every time that I'm given a word from the spirit, it always is rooted in exactly who I am. Mm -hmm. Hence, which we I know we're going to get on this, but I'm a fast forward all the way to Beyonce picking me up, using me on Cozy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my entire life has been guided by something. And so this is why I know that every space that I'm in, even meeting you, even coming in contact with you, even us having our because anytime I'm on your podcast, it goes podcast, TV show, whatever I'm on with you. It goes stupid. And we were the only people that was in the middle of the whole Nikki and Cardi thing that were still friends and still able to talk yes. reasonably and rationally. And, and I'm going to tell you why, because I've always had boundaries. I've always had boundaries with you and you've always had boundaries mm -hmm. with me. And I told you, Jason, 
Nikki is my friend and I love Nikki. I'm never, and I don't want you saying bad things about her when we in, when we in each other's presence. And I won't say anything bad about Cardi because I never say anything bad, yeah. bad about Cardi. But I know that that's your friend and I know that Nikki is mine. And Nick, and I love Nikki because Nikki is an intricate part of God putting me in her in her sight, mm -hmm. you know? Every place that I'm occupying, every space that I'm occupying, God has placed me in that space, mm -hmm. even for what we here to talk about today. But the thing I loved about our conversations when all that public feud and the fan bases were going crazy, we were actually just talking about like, how can we fix it? Yep. How can this, that? And yes. it just never came to fruition. But what I love is that we both respected each other's friendships mm -hmm. to never bring that negativity into the mm -hmm. conversation. When you, what were you gonna say well, I was going to tell you, even when you've gotten mad with me, because you've you've gotten mad with me and you've taken a hiatus from talking to me, which hurt me. What hiatus are you talking about? Jason, you went on a whole hiatus of, of not speaking to me, which hurt me. Are you me. saying I was being petty? No, you wasn't being petty. Mm. You just, one thing you don't do is call people your friend. You don't do that. I don't. And when when you know in the trajectory of where you are in your career and who who you talk to, and when you see somebody as your friend, you fuck with them. Oh, yeah. You've seen me as your friend for all these years that uh -huh. we've been friends. Then why did I stop? To, why did we stop? Because talking? you think you felt that I did an unfriendly thing. What did I think you did? Remind I, me. I had a, a, a certain oh, individual. Oh, oh, yep, sure did. And you stopped talking I to me. Now here, see, I was running from. <laughs> Because I thought I was being shady because sometimes I do get in my shit. But when it's a real friend, I don't unless I feel like my real friends is playing in my face. You stop talking to me. Okay. Now, let's yeah, let's get into that. I you, wasn't going to go there this quick in the show. Well, whatever. This this show going to go all over the place. So that means this, the editor got so to be a good edit. So let's get to it. You tell stop. the people. Tell the, so I had a show on a, on a network. That we had a show on the same network. We had a show on the same network. Mm -hmm. She came after me. I was already there. You were. She was did a show with my friend Claudia Jordan, who's been on the show. We Claudia, all love yes, Claudia. Yes, and I love Claudia. TS was somebody who would consult me and give me advice when I was getting into it with the trolls of the internet. Okay? And I was giving her advice, too. And, and when you respect somebody, you listen to them. You hear them out. And you... You don't let other things get in the way. Now, when you're on the pursuit of your shit, sometimes other dynamics come into play. And I and she to, and I was on. I was taking a bath one day in my yes. mansion. Yes, you were with my feet up and my bubbles. And I got a phone call from the network that said, "T.S. Madison will be interviewing this person, Tasha K." Mm -hmm. I was livid but not livid in the way that because we're friends so not livid like who this bitch thinks she is i'm about to burn this bitch house down uh, no because you that. will burn a house down i will burn a house down but not yours because bitch you carry a gun <laughs> uh, i do <laughs> but i said i said <laughs> i was disappointed i was disappointed because i felt like you have been first of all let's go back when you had queen's court with, Ka with uh -huh. kaya yes and that dissolved so instantly uh-huh you had reached a level of success on the internet where people were copying you. Your mm -hmm. name was in mm -hmm. conversations. Mm -hmm. It was moving the needle and getting mm -hmm. reactions from the industry, which is really hard. And the which birth that bitch were we talking about? But go ahead. And so when it dissolved so immediately, um, I don't know if you question what was next or not whether you'd be successful, but what was next in that space because mm -hmm. you had kind of built your thing. Nicki mm -hmm. Minaj was going to do the show with you guys mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, and so now you get the show on your own and it's like when you get a new show, it has to be hot. You got to have the hot topics, what people are talking about. And you decided that you were going to interview Tasha K. I did. On my I, network. I, I did. I Hush. I did because at the time, you know, she was, uh, that situation was really big. It, it first popped off. And so. The Nikki and Cardi stuff. Uh, no. The, the lawsuit. The, the Cardi lawsuit. lawsuit. It yes. was the lawsuit. Yes. You know, I've never, t here's the thing. I've never talked about anything with Nikki and Cardi. Yeah. Never. No, you haven't. I talk to Nikki separately about how I feel about it. You talk to Cardi how you feel about it. Personally, in the whole grand scheme of things, I feel that that it, there's enough room. And I feel that the ladies both put out music. And I feel that Nikki carved a lane for the things to happen. And Cardi's carving a lane for things to happen for, for the girls. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't I'm I don't have a but Nikki is still my friend and mm -hmm. I love Nikki. Yeah. But now, you don't have a personal stake in it because it had nothing to do with no, you. No, don't have Same anything to do with me. Yeah. I don't have nothing to do with that, you know. Um, and I and I think that both ladies are talented. Yeah, you know, extremely. Agreed. Um, now, interviewing this girl, 
so the girl came on my the woman came on my podcast because she's a grown, she's an adult person. Yeah. Is she ugly in person? Um, <laughs> my makeup artist uh, made her look nice, and she's uh, been looking nice ever since. Okay. <laughs> okay. My makeup artist made her look nice, okay. and she's looked nice ever since. Okay. Women, there's nothing wrong with pulling yourself together at all. <laughs> On and off camera. Mm. So then you thought this would be great to bring Tasha K into the show um, on that network that we used to be on because it was a hot conversation at the time. And yes. I found out about it. And, and you were mad. And here's the thing. You were upset with me. You, you cussed me out. And, I said, and we were talking and I said, well, Jason, at the, at, the, at the stake of our friendship, you know, find me because you are fat, fat, vastly connected. Find me somebody that will come in and fill the spot and we'll just move Tasha K's segment to another thing. I'll do that separately with her and myself personally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I understood you were there on the network, you know, Claudia Jordan, and you were talking about, you know, me having a show over there. Claudia Jordan, executive produced the show with me, you know, which I love Claudia Jordan for those things. And here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place here. I want you to know I love Claudia Jordan for yeah, that. Yeah. And Claudia Jordan at times gets uh, flack for the way that she feels about certain terms and about women, womanhood and all this stuff. But it's anybody that's in that space never feels that way with me mm -hmm. because I'm I stand ten toes down to me being trans. And I and I understand the way the needle of the conversation goes, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, but talent is talent. She and I were both were big advocates for you at the network because I mean you're. Yeah, and you're we didn't, and we did good numbers over there at that yeah. show, and so when when we when I brought her, I hadn't talked about the situation with with Cardi, and Tasha. I hadn't talked about it at all because I thought that we were okay. When you're friends with somebody, you don't talk about. I don't. Just like when things go on with you, I don't talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I have a personal telephone line to you mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. pick up my phone and call you and be like, bitch, what's going on? Mm -hmm, what happened? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to talk about that on a public platform. Maybe that's biased to me. Maybe I, maybe people say, well, you don't have no, you shouldn't have friends in the industry. Nah, I, when people fuck with me, I fuck with them the long way. Mm -hmm. People don't know how many times that you've been in this in the gate, like bring T.S. Madison. You need to get T.S. Madison. You need to talk. I respect things like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't say anything. I don't have anything negative to say about Nikki mm -hmm. because Nikki is there like, bring my girl. Mm -hmm. My girl she needs to be She brought you the Queens radio. radio. My girl need, I want my girl here. This is what I want. And so this is why I have a, a tight connection with Nikki. Like, you don't know. I'm trans. So the smallest good deed that you do for me as a, as a, as a heterosexual bio person that loves us, I respect that because we don't get much of shit in the world. But what do you feel that Tasha K did for you as you articulate for all of us, for you to give her that platform. Well, at the time when, when and, and here's the thing, this is why you gotta be also mindful of what people do when they do it. At the time, uh, when when Kaya and I split, uh, Tasha K was there talking with my former manager. They were talking and stuff like that. And she was, she was telling him that, you know, she was trying to help me get my channel back. And, you know, cause uh, one of the other bloggers, I'm never naming that bitch. One of the other bloggers were, was on a on a mission to get my channel, my old YouTube channel down, and they succeeded, and it's okay. I was hurt by that, but I went up, and then I surpassed them, because mm -hmm. that's how it works. Mm. And so, you know, she was saying that she was behind the scenes helping me, you know, try to get my channel back and all this type of stuff, and I was grateful for. Her. And I said, like, well, you know, when this when everything comes back up maybe we need to do something together, you know? Like, I've always been grateful for that. Were you gonna reboot the Queen's Court with her? No. Okay. She's not She's not on Kaya's level. And I don't even fuck with Kaya. She's not on Kaya's level. Nobody's on Kaya's level when it comes down to reading a bitch to the floor. They're not skilled. She's, she's a good. nasty. Yeah. Kaya's nasty too, but she's a low down, scumbag, dirty. She's the gutter. Foot dragon. Yes, absolutely. Ball head, scallywag, punk bitch version. <laughs> of a bitch that'll get fucked up on some foul shit that they do yeah. to people. Like there's so many people in the street that she do things, vicious, malicious things to that, you know, even when that 
And Tasha he, or Tasha. Ka- Tasha. Okay. Kaya just be talking. Okay. Kaya be talking, talking, talking. She's going to talk about your mama, your grandma, your dick. But you gave her the platform because you felt like at one point she was trying to help you. Yes. And okay. I, I was grateful for her for that. And so did you understand when I called you, it was less about me not liking her and believe in, but more of me believing we shouldn't prop up this person who is just a nasty person. Well, I, I, I saw it from your perspective, but I also was interested in the case because I hadn't talked about her. Mm-hmm. You know, I hadn't talked about her. I hadn't talked about any of it on any of my platforms. And I wanted to talk instead of, and I said it on my show, instead of me talking about her, I talk, I wanted to talk to her. Like, well, what happened? Mm-hmm. Like, how did you get yourself in this space like this? Like, what did you, why, why wouldn't you just stop? You know? Mm-hmm. And now that I'm on the receiving end of it, I'm like, okay, I see what it is. It's your gutter snipe. Mm-hmm. And that's just what what the gutter snipes do. Um, and so I called TS. You did. I face. We only Facetime. We don't talk on the phone. I face. You Facetime again. because you want me to see your. You want me to see your face. And you it, when the when I answered the Facetime, you was like, "Bitch, listen. Look at me in my eyes, y'all. Cause this how I look. Bitch, listen. You supposed to be my friend, and you playing on my motherfucking top like that. Did I say that? You did. You playing on my top like that? And you said, I wanted to come to you directly so you didn't hear this from a third party. You need to hear this from me. I feel some type of way about this because T.S., I don't call many people my friend, but you my friend and I feel that you better than doing this and why are you giving this person a platform like this? And I was like, Jason, that's not the case about me giving a platform. I really... But the first part of what she said is important. I said, I feel you're better than that. You did. Because that's what it really was about. It was like, she can go talk to anybody she wants. I mean, she literally is just a receptacle. Ben, she's trash. We know this, right? She's, she's like you said, she has four million pe- four million reasons to be. She worried, got four million problems, but she's still on the internet causing Adding problems, more problems, right? To herself. And so I just felt like, because I, I see you from the outside. Sometimes, yeah. like you may not see you from the outside. I don't see me from the in- outside. I feel like I'm watching your hustle. I watch your influence. Yeah. I watch your audience. You have a, it, having an audience be engaged with you, following you all through Europe. Watching what you eat in, yeah. watching you get your hair done, your yeah. makeup, this, that. That's not easy to keep it's people not engaged. Easy. It's, no, it's not. And it's just like, I get on there. And, and here's the thing. I get on the internet and I just share me. I've always shared me. I've always mm-hmm. been raw, real. So there's nothing that you can put out in the streets that I haven't told you. Mm-hmm. Or nothing like, okay, well, I did that. You know, this happened. You know what I'm saying? And so when people try to turn that stuff around and use that type of shit against me, I just be like, girl, what you doing? Mm-hmm. But the other thing, too, is, I, you know, she's left trails of of um of disloyalty like she was like team nikki hard all day long then there was the audio that came out where she was dissing her husband and it's sort of like then she back over on team nikki then nikki doesn't have a run it's sort of like she's kind of shown a history of not being a loyal person did you did your wanting to have compassion for people or just blindly love people or want to help people get in the way um well i will tell you what happened was i at the time my former manager and i were having conversations about how that 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 she was going on a dark path and and, and here's the thing I want to say this when I met the the Tasha K that I see now was not the Tasha K that I met before like Tasha K was very helpful to me Tasha K was very you know but maybe but obviously it had a motive behind it, it had an arterial motive behind it and I'm okay with that like now knowing this like oh, okay well Madison you got goop Cause you, I'll go in trusting like, Hey girl, I like you too. Like, you know, you're going to help me get my channel back. Okay, cool. And then once we do that, let's, let's, you know, just have a show together. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem, personal problem with nobody. Um, but that wasn't the, that's why I'm saying like the Tasha that y'all see now, that's not the Tasha that was before. She was really trying to grab for straws. Like where she, how, you know, where she is now. Like, you know, cause when me and Kaya split up, that's when everybody started birthing. Mm-hmm. All the kids started coming. They had judge shows. They had this. We were a very huge cultural influence. Mm-hmm. Whether the people want to give that to us or not, she and I together were a huge cultural influence. We influenced way big networks and everything, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. Isn't there a show on Peacock called The Queen's Court? Mm. I love this three. You mean the one with Tamar Braxton and Evelyn Lozada and Nivea? Yeah, and I watched it. I watched it and I supported it and I also pushed it because mm. I, I wanted it to succeed. You feel like you should have been part of it? I do. Yes. Mm. I feel like that I should have been somewhere in that. Like we, we, we built the name strong. So the show didn't air for like a couple weeks. And I thought it wasn't going to air and then it aired. I didn't, we didn't have no beef. 
I just fell back for a little bit. And you stopped talking to me. I was hurt by that because I really like you. I really, I actually love you mm -hmm. because I've seen you on numerous platforms. And see, this is this is this is the thing that people need to. I'm gonna look dead in the camera. It's not when people are in your face that you see them standing up for you. It's when you're not there. When they're standing up for you that you know that they fuck with you or not. And I've seen you in numerous places saying, I learned this from T.S. Madison. I learned that from T.S. Madison. I, I fuck with T.S. Madison. Now, you may not agree with everything I do and say, but you you tell the truth. Like, I learned this from her, this my, and that's my friend. I fuck with her. Yeah. And y'all need to talk, have a conversation with Yeah, because I just feel like if you really fuck with somebody, this I'm really big on support me in public the way you support me in private. Right. If you don't support me in public, don't don't be my friend in private. And now, Jason, you know I have called you with times. I'll be like, Jason, don't say that. Don't do that. Yeah. And even when, that, even when you was dragging <laughs> Tasha K. You did. I called just like, Jason, don't do that. Do you do you regret that? Um. Mm. Before she answers that question, take a look at Madison's recent intro to her show uh, where she said this about her. First of all, Tasha K, bitch, fuck you. Fuck you, you whirlpool, wishy-washy, flip-flopping the ass bitch. I really wasn't gonna come on with no with no motherfucking malice or ill in my heart, cause the second part of what I'm getting ready to talk about ain't got I don't have no male or illness in my heart. But you bald head, scallywag, dirty foot dragging, drunk pussy, ditzy bitch, play with your pussy, bitch, and don't play with motherfucking me, bitch. When you brought your struggling ass over here, bitch, I I sent my makeup artist to to, to fix your ugly ass up. Okay, let's get that let's get that for number one. Bitch, you borrowed from me. Number one. Number motherfucking two, bitch. <laughs> if it wasn't for me and Kaya split, bitch, you'll be trying to figure out who the fuck you is. One thing T.S. Madison has always done is stood on that bitch. She is T.S. fucking Madison, bitch. I told y'all bitches I was I had dick at the bottom and titty at the top, bitch, from day one when the door fucking opened. And the only reason why I'm not going to get on your on your mama it's because your mama ain't did nothing to me now bitch you got four million motherfucking problems that you need to be worrying about bitch you flipping asshole and you ain't you don't need to be worrying shit about motherfucking me you need to be trying to take care of them four million motherfucking problems you got bitch before them goddamn uh african kids be out there on save a child bitch paying 35 cents a day walking around trying to get their next meal Find you somebody to play with, pussy asshole bitch. I'm from Miami, Florida, just like bitch you from Florida. Punk bitch. I ain't never did shit to you. Brought your struggling, ditzy, drunk ass into my motherfucking house. That's how you, that's how you phony bitches work. Off the door. Fuck your pussy ass. Fuck you and the motherfucking football head ass kids you got, bitch. <laughs> Don't play with me, ho. I don't like pussy ass bitches like you because there always be bitches like you that always do fuck shit like that. It's always you. That's how I know you a Florida bitch. I don't grew up with bitches like you just like that. You was just calling Jess a man two motherfucking days ago. Ugly ass ho. Bitch, if it wasn't for my motherfucking makeup artist, bitch, you wouldn't look nice as you do now. Because you's an ugly motherfucker. Just like your man, bitch. Because we got the pictures. That's number motherfucking one. You ain't loyal to nobody, so I wouldn't expect anything less of you. You a scumbag ass bitch, foot dragging ass motherfucking hoe. You, bitch, Tasha K. I'm talking directly to motherfuckers today. Fuck you. <laughs> Welcome to the Jason Lee Show. Yeah. Um, but do you get nervous now with all the success you're getting and getting all these mainstream looks that you still get drugged to the gutter by people like that? I'm not nervous about it. I expect it. Mm -hmm. But I don't expect it from somebody that I did, that I honestly and truly, um, honestly and truly didn't have a pr problem with. Mm -hmm. I did honestly and truly not have a problem with Tasha K. Mm -hmm. And I remember me calling you saying, now, Jason, don't read her kids. And I end up laying her kids football head ass motherfucking 35 cents save a child you in Africa. The, you, you know, the kids was getting 50 cents a day. You said hers was No, they 35 cents. You better go back to them old shows where they was 35 cents a day. Is that the uh, kids with the flies in the eyes? That's the kid with the flies in the eyes and the salad shirts. On the, for just 35 cents a day, 
You can save a black African hungry child. And every time I see that motherfucking commercial right now in my brain, I see Tasha K's kids. Because <laughs> I seen them in person. The kids? Mm hmm. You... 35 cents save a child. But no. them children hungry, they're going to need a dollar. Especially at the rate that bitch going. Did they have the bloated stomachs too or no? They had bloated stomachs. They had big football hay Arnold heads. For 35 cents a day, you too could save a child in Africa. And you know her husband, Umba Fulu, whatever that nigga's name is. <laughs> Wait, so she, so did they come to your house? Yes, they've been to my you home. You let them in your home, Maddie? Yes, they've been to my home. I've been to their home. They've eaten at my home. That's where they eat? They've eaten real food. Mm. Diabetes food, bitch. The bitch said my mama had diabetes. Mm. And I was fat and bit fat, bad about it like my mama. But I've seen her mother. Her mother's also my fan. And we've taken pictures together. And I like her mother. So I'm not going to drag her mother. I thought that was big of you to say that. Because while you were reading her and you were on a roll. Because when you're on a roll, things can slip out. Mm -hmm. Like kids. Oh, there's more things that, that could have came out, but I didn't do it. Like what? Because, nope. Because <laughs> I am mainstream. <laughs> I mean, you can get one off if you want. Nope, yeah. I done did it. For 35 cents a day, <laughs> you too could save a child, but some are more hungrier than others, and you may need to send a dollar. So she doxxed you recently, right? Uh, she put my passport up, and it is illegal for you to post uh, passport people's passports online. Did she steal your passport out your house? No, it was given to her. Who gave it to her? Well, you know... Only, there's only people who have my passport would be people who are either part of my management team or myself. And so your personal information got out to her and then she now has put it out online. Um, yeah. I mean, the, especially I know exactly because the, the picture that she posted online, I can go back in my phone and show exactly where I, where I transmitted that picture to. Mm -hmm. That exact picture. Mm -hmm. That's on, on her. Listen, you are a person who has assets and things that you need to keep, you know, your personal stuff protected. Yeah. So if anything, that, if any picture or photograph or th that you put out and, and you can clearly see that you sent it, to some, you know where you sent your oh, passport. Oh, yeah. I right? know who has on my You know who document. has yeah, your... Yeah. And now, are you going to pursue something with that? I'm I mean, a, I've already begun. So we're going to be chanting, lock her up. I've already began, I'm, and I'm, I'm very, I'm heavy on it. We're going back to the root of why she was upset. So she was upset because when you did the interview with her on that other network, that there was a segment that involved a conversation about the industry that she was not a part of. Uh, and about bloggers talking, about putting out falsities and things yeah, like yeah. that, whatever. By the time that show was turned in, Jason, because you know we, you know the time frames on how you got to turn the show yeah, in. Yeah. But I had a different set of standards. Mm -hmm. Well, the different set of standards is I edit, I shot and edited what I wanted and I delivered a locked cut. So whatever I sent, that's what it was. Yours, you guys shoot, they edit it and then they air it. In that order. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and so when, when I watched it, you know, I didn't see that, that put in there because I didn't edit the show. Mm -hmm. And then when she called me about it, I was like, but, you know, I, I didn't do that, you know, but. The way that she just recently came at me was way more, and all this malicious shit she doing, it was it was d way deeply rooted mm -hmm. in that. Because she's been throwing shots and jabs. She, she's been saying, and I've been seeing you, I've been seeing her throw shots and jabs. I've been seeing it, but I didn't, I didn't pay it. I paid it because I thought that we were okay. And I was like, I'm not getting that rent. I don't want to get, I don't want to go down this shithole with her because this is going to make me turn up. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to turn up like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 so I'm, so I, this is why I chose to turn up the legal route this way. But I'm a Florida bitch. So look, let's go all the way back. So now you have all the success. You've done all these different projects. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and break some of them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So recently, I know I just saw that you were in the perfect fine with yes. Gabrielle Union and my boy um, Keith, Keith Powers. Keith, I love Keith. Keith is amazing. He's from Sacramento, up north where I'm from. Oh, Keith is so, let me tell you something. Keith is so nice. And Keith is so nice, so sweet. Treated me so kind. We had so much fun. I, he was so, so great to me. Uh, uh, Numa Perrier, Gina Torres, Gabrielle Union, who I bonded with. 
I bonded with Gabby. Did you, but did you did you bond with Gabrielle Union because of the work that you did in supporting her daughter privately? I mean, publicly before you met her, or just you met her and instantly connected? I met her instantly connected, and I also was very happy to, with the with the things that she, that she's doing, her and her husband are doing mm -hmm. with their with their daughter. And then I had an opportunity to, to meet Zaya at the the uh, Glad Awards, of which I was a presenter here in L.A. and and Zaya. I, it was such a great moment. It was such a, oh, I love Zaya. But I love Gabby because she gets it and she understands. And, you know, sometimes people come into understanding instead of just, you know, from from off the, off the gate. Like, I get it. I get it. A lot of people talk about gay, trans, lesbian, all this stuff because it's not in their home. When it hits their home, now you got to adjust, embrace to how I'm going to do this. Like, oh, this is different. Well, she got a lot of criticism for being a mean girl, which did you get any of that energy from her? Like, no, you guys I, didn't working get, I didn't get any of that energy from her. Now, I'm not going to say that if that was not those people's experiences, mm -hmm. but that was not my experience with her. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I mean, at the time, Gabby was on top. Of, she was the top bitch. Like, what was the movie that you did with um, the white folks? Boy, was it boys? What was it? Uh, bros. It was bros. bros for Universal Pictures. Now that movie didn't do well. Uh uh. Why? I think that I think. Well, I mean, it did. It did what it was going to do. Because you, you marketed the hell out of it. I did. They, market, they I did, did. They did their part in marketing it. But why? Why do you think it didn't hit? Well, well, I think it's because, and I'm just going to be honest here. I think that it was because it was two white men and a love story, and um. I think that the movie was so progressive and moves so fast forward with thinking that the people that were going to go see the movie wasn't going to absorb any of that. Mm -hmm. They were using terms like sis. And to they, each other? Mm-hmm. They were using terms, or not to each other, but like just talking about, they were using terms like sis. They were talking about uh, gay relationships. Uh, they were talking about gay history. This is stuff that we still have to, we got to, Build up to build that. up yeah. to that and, movie and, was, in, and in white America they haven't really fully man, embraced that movie that. was right on on a boom and it was a good movie <laughs> yeah I know I heard it was a good movie when I sat and watched it and I watched it because I, I got I had the opportunity to see it at Toronto at the film festival and it was thousands of people in the film festival and they were laughing 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 because it was funny yeah but I was like okay now put this in front of straight people what the fuck is sis what is sis mm -hmm. You know, because we're going well, through this right now. Well, with the black, with the women, with people in general. No, but the word "sis" is is just a lot. It is, and no, they don't want to learn anything, but it's yeah. okay. Yeah. So what the fuck is sis? Because I'm I'm like, I'm sitting there like, okay, this is why, this is why, this is why, this is why, and then the the black space that we occupied in the movie was not enough. Mm -hmm. It was not enough black space, and I I want to thank Universal Pictures for giving us that opportunity because that was my first big major giant studio that knows me very well. And this is why I don't turn up on the internet and stuff no more because I'm in bed with a lot of large entities. But, but nonetheless, it's still a credit. You got the experience oh, you traveled. I'm a Universal Pictures girl. I'm an A24 girl. I'm an MTV girl. I'm a VH1 girl. You're I'm, a RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul, that's, that's why I say MTV, VH1. But what was the Paramount journey? to Because I know you'd been a guest host before like a couple of times. How, yeah. how, what was the journey to becoming permanent there? Well, what happened was like the fans. It was the fans doing. I want to thank my fans out there and the, and the, and the people that... that enjoy me being there like every time I feel the seat like the fans the fandom was like we want her there all the time but because my schedule is the way it is I can't sit there every week mm -hmm. and I don't live in LA I should come out here I mean I'm always out here I'm out here every it's so gorgeous out here but there's no men here for me how does it work with Rue? Because the, on the podcast, I said that I didn't understand this um, drag bear. You know, the Builder Bear made a drag queen bear. Mm -hmm. did, you see, did you see that? I did. Do we need a drag queen bear? Yes. Why? We have drag queens. Can they not have a bear? But did you think, because here's what I think. And people think that people think that the LGBT community is all on the same page with everything. No, and, we're not. And we're not. We'll just be very clear. We're all very different groups of people, too. We, very. The lesbians got their thing. Hey, mm -hmm. Kaylin back there. The lesbians got their thing. <laughs> the gays, I you the gays got their thing. Hey, Johnny. Um, we all are different. Johnny, you gay? That's why you Everybody know here is gay or lesbian except for Marina. She's just dating a black man. No, so when so when RuPaul when when uh, Build a Bear came out with the drag bear, mm -hmm. I dragged it. I was like, why do we need a drag bear? Why do kids need to play with a drag bear? I feel like now I'm not one of these people online that says 
keep all this gay stuff away from our kids because some of your kids are just gay. Like, you, you, you know, whatever. But the drag queen bear. Do yeah. we need a drag queen bear? Yeah, we need it. We need everything. Because here's the thing, like, their kids, they're, they're going to be gay kids. Kids c- kids are born gay. Mm-hmm. I was born gay and found out that I was trans. Right. So, you know, it's just people are born what they are. And you need to see representation everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't be the Jason Lee that you are now if you didn't see somebody representing what you saw in your in your. But mission. I still don't see masculine, gay, black men on TV. But, I see people, they want us to be accessories with purses and heels and makeup, all that shit. And we're bosses, too. Like, not to say those people that do that aren't bosses, but I don't feel like mainstream allows the real representation of what a gay black man looks like. So that's what I do on my own platforms. You know what I mean? But you are also given a platform for, for masculine, gay, black men Mm-hmm. Uh, to aspire to. Right. So we need you in those spaces. We need to see you. But that's why I say I would understand a trans bear, but what does a dr- what does a drag bear represent? It's just a bear that got on a wig. Take the wig off. It's a bear. You can't take the wig off. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, well, it's a trans bear. <laughs> <laughs> Just call it a trap. Well, it's RuPaul, so it's drag. It's drag. It's drag. Okay. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, but this is again where we can have a debate or a conversation yeah. and not necessarily agree. You asked me not what it's like working with RuPaul. I love RuPaul. RuPaul was somebody that I watched when I was about 14 years old, and mm. the spirit whispered in my ear and was like, That's going to be your friend, and you're going to work together. I was looking around like, Who the fuck said that? I, I'm serious about it. I said, Who the fuck said that? Then anyway, I'm back watching it. And I never to knew, know that by me showing my naked body, titties at the top, dick at the bottom, at the, coming to the front door, come on in, no way, twitch, da, 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 that this is the way that I was going to be discovered. So RuPaul saw that? Yes, was thought it was so funny. <laughs> Screamed and hollered. Y'all don't know, RuPaul loves everything that's unorthodox. Mm-hmm. If it's out of the, the stratosphere, if it's out of the box, if it's not in, if, if it's colors in the line, he don't see it. If it's outside of the lines and everything else, RuPaul sees that stuff. So RuPaul's iconic. If you don't know who RuPaul is, you must be living under a rock. I remember RuPaul back in the 80s. Yeah. I mean, but what makes RuPaul so iconic is that he came out at a time where drag was like not even really visible. Right. And then did it in such a mainstream way on MTV and all, just the whole world. Yes. And became a phenomenon. But the thing that's interesting about RuPaul is he's so private. Like, you don't see Ru. Ru- RuPaul's a Scorpio. Okay. But what does that mean? Oh, honey, Scorpios are the most private. People. But does he come outside? Like, what does he do? Uh, and he, and RuPaul is a is a is an extroverted introvert. Mm. You got you got to get in where you need to get in, and then you just vanish. That's a, RuPaul does. RuPaul has his own convention. RuPaul's Drag Con. Mm-hmm. RuPaul left the convention once and got on his bike and rode down Hollywood Boulevard. And that's it. Mm-hmm. So Ru doesn't like go out to the Abbey for drinks on a Sunday. Uh you've never seen Ru ever. Ever. No, we don't do none of that stuff. Okay, so now you're over there at Drag Race. Are you enjoying the, the job? I, I love my job. I love my job because I get to see queens from all walks of life, from all different ages, come in through that space and become superstars. This was not available for us when we were younger. Right. I didn't see that many homosexuals or, 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 or men getting into drag and getting out of drag becoming into superstars or flourishing into superstars. You know, either you, when you were when you were a homosexual, you were gay, uh, a, 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 a punk or whatever the, the term they yeah. use, you were, you were on, the, the only uh, stardom that you were going to get was AIDS. Mm-hmm. That was it. You was right. going to rise up and you were going to die of AIDS. But now look, I, now I look at like, we have come a long way, but even with the us coming a long way, there's still so much that we have to accomplish, right? I, I always feel like when people talk about Black Lives Matter and the movement of Black folk, the, the, the movement that we're all in, the civil rights movement, because mm-hmm. we still are in the civil rights movement. We are. Um, because we've gotten a little bit of progress or a little bit of rights, people feel like we made it, we got everything. We haven't gotten no, everything. we haven't. We, you know? And so when I look at our, our movement with our community, I feel like people don't understand we're still in a fight for our lives, too. Yes, we're still fighting for our lives, but we're so, div- we're so internally divided. Do you think that's because people don't realize we all have our own individual fights too? Like the gay fight is one thing, the lesbian fight is another thing, bisexuals, people don't even understand that, and then trans have their own fight. Do you think that's why we're fragmented or I think we're fragmented because we don't see all of us and I'm talking and I'm talking to black people. We're 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 spaced out because we don't see all of us as black. We don't see all the all shades of black. Mm-hmm. That's why I was so 
amazing for me that Beyonce used my rant because my rant on YouTube was about being black, being trans, and being that at the same time. So T.S. Madison was in Beyonce's uh, song Cozy, featured in, on Cozy, mm -hmm. and you posted it probably 99 million times. But here's the deal. I would have posted it 100 million times yeah. because that's a for for the biggest artist in the world to be able to see you in the world where trans people don't feel visible. We're one percent is, is is huge. Yes. But that's what I love about Beyonce. She didn't just add your audio to a track. She did it in a way to honor the visibility that the trans community has been yes, fighting for. That and 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 she made sure that I was compensated in perpetuity. And I got a gift for you. What is that? What kind of gift you yeah, got? Let's start with this. Wait let's a just, minute. What is let's this? Let's just start with this now. You got nails, so we didn't oh wrap it up. Oh my God, no, no, nobody ever give me nothing. Let me pull it down like this. What's Oh God. Not a not an uncircumcised oh gift. Oh God. Oh, I like when the skin go back. What's this? Ah! <laughs> Even though I got one. Ah! Oh my God! Oh Wait, do you have God. you have the vinyl? I do. Because ah, I get purple, I get residuals from this too. Ah! Oh my God! So you got residuals from me buying that? I did. Oh. Yes, I am credited as a writer on here on this. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you get a Grammy? I do have a Grammy. You got a Grammy for that, yes, because I'm a credit. I'm a credited writer on this. You got a Grammy for that song, for the album. For the album. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wait, so you're Grammy award winning? I am. Congratulations. And I didn't know that until all the things were like you know the, the writers were uh, the writers were once my lawyers and all this stuff fixed and got everything situated. You know, that's what happens. And we, we're fixing everything right now. with the, So for those of you that are going to run out there and try to look it up and do this stuff, we're, my, my lawyers and stuff right now are currently fixing all the things with the Recording Academy. Wait, so is that why you put your face on this image on no, social media? No, somebody put months? my face on that and sent it to me. Look, here, It look, was so funny. Look, here's the photo right here. Take a look. Okay, so you didn't, why you didn't get to go to the Grammys? I heard you showed up and they no, let you went, the no, carpet. I went to the Grammys. And, I, and I, I went to the Grammys at the last minute. I didn't know how any of that stuff worked. Because you have never been, I've never been up for a Grammy. You know, my management, I've never had a, a management that understood that. I didn't have any PR. Like my You got to go early, Maddie. But here's the thing. That wasn't the case. When the, the, the publishing company that I'm with that uh, um, is also a part of it, like Honey Dijon, Carice, Dave Jowes, we're all in, in the mix of this. And so, you know, when I found out about it, I don't have a, I, I have a PR, but I don't have a PR like that yeah. where they they know about this type of stuff like this. And so once I heard about it, I was like, can, can I go to the Grammys? But you had my number. Oh, you said I had your number. I, I did, Jason, but you wasn't speaking to me at the time. Oh, God. Knock it off. Yeah. We weren't, we weren't not talking for that long. No, we wasn't. But we, it was a while you stopped talking to me. It was. I know yeah, shit. You stopped talking to me. You're a Leo, and I, I get it. But listen, and so I went to the Grammys. I, I, I didn't have a carpet ticket. So I couldn't walk on the carpet because you, I didn't have a carpet ticket. Mm. The ticket that I had was for You need for a the drive Grammys. on pass to get to the carpet. Then you need a ticket to walk the carpet. Right. I didn't have a carpet ticket. Okay. And well, next year we'll go together. Yeah, we're going to go. Okay. But I, di I didn't have a carpet ticket. My ticket was just for me to, to get into the thing. Yeah. I didn't know how any of the processes and stuff work. So, but I just, I went to the Grammys when they, when, when the album won, I screamed and hollered, whatever. I watched the Grammys and I, and I went on about my business. I put on my, my sickening, elegant dress or whatever. I got the, cause I'm, I'm at the Grammys. So this is what I want to know, because I'm sure you've had this interview. I'm sure you've said it, but I never asked you. Where were you when you found out that you were going to be on the song? Um, when I, I need to sit this by me. I want Beyonce to always be by me. She's amazing. Yes. I, I know she is. I really wish I could meet her one day. But the word is that you did because y'all shot visuals that never came out. That's Who what the Who told you said. that? Mm. I don't know. Who told you anything you like that? You do know that? that I'm Hollywood Unlocked and I keep my ear to the street. And I heard you met her. That's not, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not, I'm, that's not true. I, I've never shot a visual. <laughs> okay, I have another gift for you. <laughs> and we'll use this one for right now. Can you open what's, that? What's this? Ooh, I got another reveal. Hold on. Hold on. Ooh, 
bunch of stuff in here. You can roll that down oh, to. Actually, I'm going to stick my hand in this. This is a different kind of gift. Wait, wait a minute. This feels familiar. Wait, oh, okay, I got it. But this feels... <laughs> wait a minute, hold up. Oh my God, I got a gavel! And a... Oh my God, yeah! The, the verdict is you lying like a mother. Oh my God, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is well. Okay, so you so you're gonna you're gonna um, claim that you never met Beyonce, right? I haven't shot any visuals. Okay, well, just I'll I'll give you that one. I'll let that go because we haven't seen them. Um, have you met Beyonce? Yes. What What was that experience like? I love her. Yeah. I love Beyonce. I love Beyonce immensely. Beyonce is a very down to earth person. Um, we laughed a lot. Uh, and she's an amazing, she's an amazing person. She loves her, she loves black. She's she's 150% black. If you mm -hmm. don't know, bitch, you better know. Right. And she loves people. She loves everybody. And she's a workaholic. And I love her tremendously. I, I love her so tremendously because she could have easily taken my voice and moved on by her business. She's Beyonce. And I could have been a small fry on the internet saying, girl, where my voice at? Like, girl, that's me. But she didn't do that. And I respect her. Like, I almost want to, almost about to get emotional for that because it's so, so much that has been taken from me. So many catchphrases, so much stuff in the world has been taken from me. And I watch it in mainstream. And I'm like, damn, they don't even know that TikTok stuff originated with me. And this woman, um, made sure that in perpetuity that I'm paid. Mm -hmm. my, the, what my deal was with how it came out or whatever. And I, I, I respect her for that. I will forever respect her for that. Did you ask her why she chose to use it in the song? Um, did you talk Did you talk at all with her about why she used that? I didn't get a, a long enough time to talk about, talk about why she used it. I, it. I understood why. Because when I listened to the song and she started, which means that she has watched me. Mm -hmm. Um, and she started singing about the different colors of the flag. Which I didn't even get that until yeah. this year. She started singing about the different colors of the flag. And then she's like, she's a god. She's a hero. She survived all she's been through. I've been vocal about every, every struggle, everything that I've been through all my life, ups and downs, wins and fails on the internet. I've talked about, I've, I remember me being on live and talking about the scars on my body and how I'm comfortable with them. I'm comfortable with all the scars that are on me. And they're comfortable in my skin. I love my, oh my God, I almost, I can't believe I'm about to cry. But that's what I think people don't know about Beyonce, how intentional and real she is and how in touch she is because in the trans movement, people feel invisible. Yes. And for the biggest star in the world, like I don't know if people really understand that Beyonce is the biggest star in the world yes. for her to see you, hear you, embedded in the song in a way that you don't even catch it till you catch it yeah. or till it caught you. It was It was huge. Yeah, and it's just like, I just, like, that's important. She could have took that from me mm -hmm. and not gave me any money. Mm -hmm. And she didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it's just, it's... it's Did, was it a boost of confidence? It was not only a boost of confidence, because I had been telling them bitches, Beyonce, watch me. <laughs> did I, Before all that? I've been telling but them. But did you know that or you just thought that? Because the, when she came out and it was, thank you, and it was like hot sauce in my bag. Uh -huh. There was a video I was cussing a bitch out online before uh, 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 that song came out. Um, when she when she had yeah, the bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was the cussing lemon, a bitch. Album. Man, fuck y'all pussy ass hoes. Da, da, da. I was doing it online. And I and somebody said they was going to do something. I said, oh, I ain't worried about this shit, bitch, because I keep my hot sauce in my bag. And I keep a small bat with me. <laughs> My nine millimeter and a big can of mace. And there's a gif out there. In case you have to go to Florida in October? No, that's just something different. I'm just going to go there and enjoy For my birthday. birthday. Oh, yeah. Celebrate. Celebrate. <laughs> but I keep a bat, a nine, and a, a can of mace in my thing. And there's a gif out there of me shaking the, 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 the mace, swinging the bat, and, the, and with my gun. But I posted it on Facebook, and I pulled my bat out of my pocketbook. And I said, bitch, I got my hot sauce. When she was walking down the street and that bat had hot sauce on it, I made a post. I said, bitch, Beyonce, watch me. <laughs> yeah.
She watches me. But the crazy part is they all are watching us. I Not not that it uh, gave you confidence, but did it validate you? It did. Did it give you validation? It validated me, and I let no bitch know, bitch. I told y'all Beyonce was watching me. Mm. She, she, she may not have put me on hot sauce in my bag, mm-hmm. but I told y'all that that girl be watching me. Like, the, when I met her in, you know, not in a workspace, but like, you know, in passing. Y'all were at a bar? No, I didn't meet her at a bar. Y'all were at a party? Y'all were at the rap party for all the visuals y'all didn't shoot? I don't know what you're talking about. I I haven't shot any visuals. But. I know people too, Maddie. I don't know what you're talking about at all. I just know. See, when Maddie flies into LA, this is my city. (laughs) When she flies into my city and she posts LAX, but she keeps coming back and forth at the same time, all my friends are telling me about all these visuals that ain't being shot. I called Maddie up one day. I'm like, what are you doing in LA? She's like, I'm just here. Yeah. See, now you now you're not even you can't even talk to me. Like I now you playing because you didn't sign all these NDAs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that this is called NDA. Don't know what you talk. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> but I will say in, in the in the moments that I did meet her, my first words to her, bitch! <laughs> they say young say all on his mouth like liquor. And we fell out laughing. Like we fell out laughing. I fell into her arms. We felt like we hugged each other. Like it was, it was such an amazing thing. She's so beautiful. Like she is so beautiful. I like the little moles that she has in her mm. face. She's such a natural beauty. She's so vibrant with with energy and nice and very nice. Mm-hmm. Man, I hugged that girl. Man, we was laughing. I mean, laughing. Like, imagine your first words to Beyonce is "bitch." They say Beyonce all on his mouth like liquor. I like the, the fact that I'm always myself everywhere I go. Was Jay-Z there? Where? Wherever you were with her. Um, I mean, like, what was your interaction with him? Because the thing I no, will I say... No, I haven't had any interaction. Okay. Because the thing I love about Jay is for him to be such an icon in hip-hop and show up to the GLAAD Awards and be mm-hmm. very present in our spaces and supporting... What? Everybody look at... Oh. No. I haven't had any interaction Let with me you. find out she was at the house with the kids and everything. I, I don't... I haven't... I don't... I met Beyonce... You was at the house? I met Beyonce in passing. In the hallway at her house? <laughs> in passing. Mm. I've not, I haven't met That too. NDA must be ironclad shit. <laughs> no, but uh, did you read what's on that gavel? No, in the front. Gagging Judge Jason. <laughs> I remember that. So I'm giving you my gavel because as a homage because, you know, um, I borrowed that from the Queen's Court. You did. Mm-hmm. When it was what it was, you did borrow it. Well, after Kaya went on that anti-gay rant, mm-hmm. I went and trademarked it. Because I feel like if you're at least going to attack the gays, button up your business, you know? I, and I own it now. The trademarks hang on my do, wall. You do own that. But let me tell you something. I'm in, no matter how nasty and vicious and evil she's been with words towards me, I'm never going to take away she's a talented artist. I, her business needs to get a little bit more tight. Yeah, but she's a talented artist, and she has a huge fan base. She the does. fan, but I mean, they, they she bo- don't put out some good music. Yeah, but we ain't never heard. It. I mean, we ain't hearing it though. We heard this couple songs. There's one in particular I like. Next one. caller, uh, there's a hater on the line that was inspired at my house. Oh yeah, listen, Queens Court. Hands There's down, nothing like hands it. down, will never be another. Ever. Ever. Not with, the most not with me by myself. No, no. Both of you together, what I love is yeah. yin and yang. Yeah. She could play bad cop, you would play good cop. Yeah. And, you know, and I love, but what I loved about how you, you were smart though. Not saying she wasn't smart. You knew mm-hmm. that you could be a part of the circus, but you couldn't be the pig. No. Because you had bigger aspirations. Did you always know in that, that like you wanted these other things? Well, I always wanted other things and I always told her that, you know, I said, Kaya, the space that we occupy now, we can be bigger than the Breakfast Club, mm-hmm. which is was a big was is still a big staple in our community. Yeah. Our show was a staple in our community, mm-hmm. and I just was like, girl, you just have to see it, you know. And I remember me sitting on the sofa talking to her, and we watched this show called Talk to Me. It was a show about Petey Green, and if you know the story of Petey Green, he was a, a DJ. A dish, yeah, dish jockey, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Um, in D.C. and he he got really big. He was in prison. He got out. He was his voice was strong. Talked to the community. Got really big. Got on the Johnny Carson show. Said, "Fuck y'all, white people." <laughs> and she, we were sitting there watching the show. And she looked at me. She said, "Madison, 
please don't never let me become P.D. Green. Mm. She said, because I do have those tendencies to do that. She was P.D. Green every episode. Every episode. Yeah. But I'm talking about the way she did it with me. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I was like, girl. And and I got a lot of flack from the community because they said Madison. Because t- today's show is most definitely about accountability. Yeah. So let's talk about accountability mm-hmm. right now. Because I know we're going to segue well, into yeah. something very important. I do, And I'm glad we're in this space, Jason. Because this space definitely segues way us into the space that we need to talk about. Absolutely. And the way we're going to do that is a way that none of you expected. Because if you've been watching the Jason Lee Show, you know we give gifts. But we also give awards. And there's only one coveted award that's been given to... What is that award? This is an award that's given to people who take pride in having a God-given talent that no other person has been given. And you would be the first recipient as a trans activist to receive the Mandingo Hall of Fame Award. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. I received this with such honor and pride because I am definitely a girl that enjoys a good Mandingo warrior. And I definitely am, have been blessed immensely from my father in heaven. Thank you, Jason, for recognizing that I am a great Mendingo warrior. But the, clap it up for that. <laughs> but you know what? I you know I I asked Maddie before we did the show if we could give her the award, and let me be clear on why I'm giving the award because we gave it to Nick Cannon because uh-huh. you know he got a big old penis. Yeah, he does. We gave it to he did we give it to it. NLE Chopper. We he gave it to NLE Chopper because he laid it on the counter once. Yeah, he didn't did. we? On, he, yeah. He, on, in here, he laid it on there? No, he didn't lay it on this counter. Oh. But I actually love me. NLE Chopper's like my little cousin now. I like like Yeah, he cool. Um, who else we give it to? Blueface. Oh, we gave it to Blueface. I seen he is on the, the sex tape. We gave it to Chloe Bailey because she got big dick energy. Okay. But you're the first trans, trans woman to receive it. And the wow. reason why we're giving it to you, besides the fact that you've been very open about your oh, past being blessed. Big bitch, big dick big dick bitch. Com. Yes. You're so open about your genitalia, which is not even a part of the trans identity, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it is a part of the identity for, listen, everybody, the, we, we as all people are not a monolith. And most definitely as trans people, we're not a monolith. Mm-hmm. Like we don't, we don't share all the same views, opinions, and ideas on things. And so uh, uh, I've been very vocal about, I'm, they, I told you they met me at the door naked. <laughs> yeah. said, Come on in, baby, bitch, got a new wig, 22. That's how people met me naked. I've always been open about my body. I've always been open about my genitalia. And I've always let people know that I'm connected to all aspects of me. And, and happy. And happy. Yeah. I'm very happy. I yeah. don't want to ever get rid of it. And not because I've sold it a lot of times, because I don't. it's not for sale it, You've been open about sex work in the past. You've been open about porn. And that's the thing that people can't take your power away because you owned it all. Uh, uh, T.S. was on the Hollywood Unlocked podcast years ago talking about not wanting to have reconstructive surgery, not to remove the penis. So why is it still a conversation, though? Well, it's a conversation because, you know, people say that you're not a real trans person until it's done. And you don't you don't get to dictate what a real trans person is or what a real trans. You can't say dictate right there. Uh, that's, you can't dictate <laughs> what a real trans person is or a real transgender woman is based off of sexual sexual body part, genitalia. Body part genitalia because transitions begins here. Mm-hmm. It begins here. I had already transitioned in my mind when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I had already transitioned. I already knew that I was connected with both spirits in in my feminine and my masculine spirit. But my feminine just might be a little bit more stronger than my masculine. My masculine spirit is my protector. Mm -hmm. Protects me. That's why I'm able to go dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when when you were on the Hollywood Lock podcast before and even in watching all your interviews Mm -hmm. and you talking about it, this is where I got educated because people think automatically because you're gay, you know everything about the trans community. And there's a difference when it comes to the white trans girls. It is most definitely Because Caitlyn Jenner is a whole different... Tell me what you think Caitlyn Jenner is. A fucking mess. A big athlete's foot having... Just a fungus. Motherfucker that got up in a dress... And identifies as trans and, just, and is anti-trans. Now, I'm going to say something that I don't want it to come off anti-trans. So tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Just say it. Okay. When I saw you, I saw a woman. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to always see a woman. No, but I'm saying, because some don't all care about what they look like. Like Caitlyn. Caitlyn ain't really making an effort to look. But Caitlyn looks like a white woman. She looks like Janice Dickinson. You know what? She do. <laughs> 
Well, like with la- well, oh, like no moisturizer. You know what Janice Dickinson looked like now? Not not Janice Dickinson, the supermodel from back in the day. No, now she what well, she looks like now, like old, yeah, they like, look like hair falling out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Candace and uh, what's it? Uh, but I don't really feel like like. Caitlyn's look like a real beat up, a real, 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 real beat up version, mm. a real beat up version. Beat down of Cindy Crawford. Mm. A real beat C- up. No, version. Cindy Crawford look oh, okay. Beat up version. Cindy, beat- I saw Cindy not too I long. Mean, Cindy, I mean, in a, yeah, I mean, like been fighting Floyd Mayweather. I mean, yeah. Duke's up beat yeah. up version. Yeah. Okay, no, but I feel like what is you smell good today too. What is that? Eternity for women. <laughs> I feel like I don't know. And I w- my deodorant. What's your deodorant? It's what is it? It's strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. <laughs> I wear I wear female deodorant too. I wear Dove spray. It just stays on longer. But it's strong enough for a man. Yeah, made for me for a woman. Well, it's, it's and made listen, for me I used too. to tell I used to tell people all the time. I'm strong enough for a woman, but made for a man. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so so. The reason why I wanted to give you the award is because you educated me a long time ago mm-hmm. that it has nothing to do with genitalia. No. And when people say to me, you're not black because you mixed, it's almost similar to saying to a trans person, you're not a woman because you still have a penis. Like, right. I identify as black. I am black. Mm-hmm. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. You're a woman. You mm-hmm. identify as a woman. That's who you are. Well, I'm a trans woman. And I want to make it clear, I'm a trans woman. But what's the okay? Well, a woman. See, here's the thing: there, there, there. Is there a difference between being a woman and a trans? Like, do do you have to make the I do. proclamation that you're I a trans do. I woman? Make, I make the proclamation because that's a part of my identity. Okay. There, every trans person is different. I make that proclamation because I want to want people to understand that my lived experience is completely different from any woman in here. Every 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 female in this room has a different experience from from every female in here but they have they sh- they share the same experience mm. they they have, they have the ability to ovulate they have the ability to to birth they have the 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 um abortion uh, well they don't have that no more Roe versus Wade is gone and we fought about that but they but fight about an- the wrong thing that's another com- that's that's it's, coming. It's gonna be that's coming that's coming but but each of these females in this room they have this they have a shared experience i don't have that experience because I am a trans woman. So we have different lived experiences, but we ha- we still fall under the same suffix, woman. So you may have different issues, but then also common issues. Com- yes. Right. But one struggle or one challenge don't take away from the other person's. Uh, it does. I, I, you think? I, yes, it does. Like, I'm, I'm, I can, I, the, I, I can only share the experience of every wom- every woman or female in this room of her telling me how it feels for her to have cramps and for her to have a period. I can only take that in and think how that feels. No, I get that. But what I'm saying is when I talk to Mexicans who are fighting with, say, the government about kids in cages at the border, I can understand that struggle mm-hmm. because I also understand in talking to black folks about reparations and slavery, right? And right. like the disconnect between people just treating human beings as human beings. Well then, well let's talk about well why Mexican people or or not all Mexican people, but why 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 would some Mexican people still be racist or vote for Trump? Right. Right. Well, listen, knowing this, that they share the same type of why would it be that? And that's a good segue to go right into where we are now. So there was this conversation that has blown up online that everybody's seen. And I told people that I wasn't going to unpack it until I had time to really dive into it. Madison uh, was out of the country enjoying mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, another friend of mine, Jess Hilarious, was who some- I like. somewhere doing whatever she was doing. Let, let's get this straight. Who I like. So this, what I'm going to show you right now is a video from a TikToker that I don't know, never have seen and haven't heard of since. Went viral, and then Jess Hilarious, comedian, um, and she's been a regular on The Breakfast Club, probably somebody that's going to fill that spot. I mean, at least she was before this video. She responded, and this is what happened. Take a look. What I mean when the transphobia just comes out, the audacity and just the 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 arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood. You don't. Okay? You don't own periods. You don't own womanhood. You experience both. And both are different for every person. But as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you. So you can't gatekeep it. Like, hello? Hello. 
who the fuck is going to stand up for us? <laughs> who the fuck stands up for us? And us, I mean women, real women, biological women, women who were born with all the parts that you guys wish that you were. Um, when does the delusion stop? What is the difference between um, you and someone who has been um, diagnosed to be mentally insane? What's the, the only difference is you don't have a straight jacket on. Stop talking out your fucking ass. Wake up. How are you projecting your anger on real women? Because we are the gatekeepers. We are the gatekeepers for periods. We the only one that fucking bleed, honey. We the only ones that can give birth. We make y'all people. We make y'all. Y'all come from us. You can't be us. You will never. You're chasing something you'll never, ever get. You'll never be that. So once that went viral, that created a firestorm on social media. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a clip from Mona at Don't Call Me White Girl where mm -hmm. she was interviewing Jess. And she said that um, Jess admitted that men have slid in her DMs and wanted to get with her because they thought well, she was Jess, a trans. Jess, have, Jess on numerous occasions um, has said that, you know, men have, uh, you know, misgendered her. Mm -hmm. Misgendering is a part of transphobia. Mm -hmm. Women can, and, and so let, let's let's take it back just a notch. So after that video aired and Jess made that statement, which I felt was a blanket statement. Mm -hmm. And so the video that Blessing Rose, uh, uh, it was snipped and they only put a segment of there. In the, and when I saw the video, I was like, what, what kind of shit is that? Because I'm so tired. And I'm just gonna say this here on the show. I'm so tired of language and 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 verbiage that are that's being put out there and and misconstrued from other trans people. A lot of times when conversations are had and when it comes to different terms, those are terms that uh, the black girls ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. The black trans girls we ain't doing that. Going back to the whole the white trans yes. girls have their stuff and then black yeah, but we're on. not doing that because mm -hmm. you know we're still trying to catch up on being educated on this type of stuff but when blessing said that okay let's can we just break this down like okay. very succinctly when blessing said that cisgender women which by the way has pissed off women too because they don't want to be called cis anymore mm -hmm. and we'll talk about why that is we live in an overly political sensitive world of cancel culture and everybody want to be labeled something. right when she said that cisgender women don't own menstruation periods mm -hmm and all that. Did you agree with that? No. From the context of which I heard it, I was like, what the fuck is this queen talking about now? <laughs> and I got angry and I wrote under there, sweetie, or not, I don't know, I wrote, but I'm confused because females are the only uh, people that can get period, that can menstruate. Biological females. Females. So do trans women identify? You didn't hear me say woman. Does trans you didn't hear me say woman. You heard me say female. So dr transgender women don't I don't identify as female. No, I don't identify as female. No, I identify as a, as a trans woman. Okay, so so you agree with that? So you agree with Jess's position that that was bullshit? I agree that Jess took what she heard because I also took what I heard mm -hmm. out of context. Like, now nah, what the fuck? <laughs> I was over there like, why the fuck? And I was angry like, why the fuck is y'all over here doing this shit now? We just come into some area of peace. Is it because you knew it was going to create a reaction? Yes, yes, I always get mad like that. Like, we just come to some fucking area of peace and now this bitch over here putting <laughs> this dumb shit out here. And then you see Jess's response. And I'm like, this is just what I thought the fuck the shit was going to be. Yeah. But then I took the time because I'm smart. I took the time and I went and watched the entirety of the video and I said, oh, Blessing was not talking about um, bio women in that status. Blessing was talking about trans men who were naturally born female that have transitioned into a man. And she was also talking about intersex people. And so then I understood the context of it like, oh, got it. Everybody was caught up into the term woman. Trans men don't identify as woman. Mm -hmm. And intersex does not identify as woman. So when she said that one, you're not the gay cis people, meaning bio, natural born, that don't own. But I thought she said cis women. 
cis women, mm-hmm. cis women don't own womanhood when it comes down to menstruation because it also it also applies to trans men and intersex. I was like, ah, I got it. Because trans men still have periods. Yes, because they were born female. Got but it. They, are, they are not a woman. Got it. So I didn't even hear that part. Because I, because I like the rest of the world, react to clips. Correct. And so Jess saw the clip yes. and reacted on behalf of biological women. And biological the, women. And tapped into the anger and frustration that some biological women may feel. Correct. And then in her response. It was, she did. She made a blanket statement. And, and said, she grouped y'all, y'all into it. We birthed it. y'all. We did this to y'all. Y'all, and so, y'all need to be a straight jacket. Y'all, y'all, y'all. No, she said the difference between you and mentally yeah. ill people is that you don't have a straight jacket on. You don't have a straight jacket on. And she then went a step further to say that you will never be us. We created y'all. Yeah. Now, what I said in the small snippet on the Daily Drop uh, was that that was transphobic. And I wasn't doing that in a way to attack what was, Jess. No, what was transphobic was the straight jacket. Yeah. That was transphobic. And the mental delusion, and this, you know, every trans person I think walking on earth knows that they are not, that they, they, they know that they were born what they were born. But isn't it transphobic to say you'll never be us it's, or, or you too, want what yeah, we got? That, uh, and, uh, well, that's a, th- a th- uh, with me, and this is just with me, it's a line with me because I understand that I will never be a female. Mm-hmm. There's no way genetically possible. Even if I go and have an operation, I will never be a female. I know this. And 99.9% of the trans people know that they will never never be the, the opposite uh, sex because we weren't born that way. But we can be women. We can identify as women and we can identify as men. Mm-hmm. It, we, can, we can do that. And identifying doesn't isn't based on having a period. Or being able to have an abortion, no, having not. a penis or a vagina. No. And do you think that lack of education just is the reason why there's so much it is most definitely, transphobia and stuff? It is out there? most definitely a lack of education. And 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 we skipped the part, Jason, where I made a post because after Jet just went on that thing, did the, the, you did a post? This is the post that you put up. Yes, there it is. And this is the post where you said that I a said lot of there women, are so many. My exact words were: there are so many women that get mistaken for transgender women that this is where the anger stems from. And and these are words that Jess has said herself that has happened to her. Uh, so, so it's not like you didn't say something that she has said. And I said that they have to understand that transphobia affects all women. Now, did you, you did that post without adding Jess's name right after all this stuff was going on. Was that because you just wanted to add that so that way maybe she would see it and have some context? I and, did, and, and I did, and I really didn't want to, you know, I really You didn't, didn't. want to go at her? I didn't want to go at her. Because I know the moment that I added her, it would have been like what it was. Mm-hmm. Then uh, the neighborhood talk picked it up. And they put, she was being subliminal. And then I was like, well, it's not subliminal if it's true. Mm-hmm. It's not shady if it's true. And then her response. Oh, I'm the last one that you need to play with. Niggas in any form turn on you. And so that's when I crunk it up. And I crunk it up and I posted her, everything that I did, I laid her words down. Hers. You said this. And that's not the first time that she has said that she has been misgendered. Mm-hmm. You know, and I didn't like the context in which she said it. Like, you know, the, the person thought I was a man. No, he didn't think that you were a man, Jess. He thought that you were trans, even though you came back and said, yo, he thought I was transgender. But you, you led in with, he thought I was a man. He thought I was a transgender. No, he thought that you were transgender. Do you think that that's a lack of education in her answer or being blatantly disrespectful? It was being, let it, it was being backing up her words. You'll never be a woman. You're a man. So that's her in a way of doubling down in, in, in standing in her transphobia. Yeah, because when you misgender, listen, I, I, I want to say this openly. I too have exuded transphobia myself. Well, I used to say tranny. That's transphobia, right? Yeah, right now. But I, I, you, because when you misgender a person, that is a part of transphobia. Because when you're misgendering someone, let's say I'm, I'm we we standing in a public place and I'm like, that's a man and she's trying to go in the bathroom and somebody wrestles this bitch down on the floor and she's a woman, but you've been messy saying that's a man, that's a man because or you're... if we call Caitlyn Bruce, right? That's a part of transphobia. Mm-hmm. 
It might be there's subtle parts of it and then there's extreme parts of it. I've done it myself by saying, Wendy, Wendell, Bartholomew, Orenthal, Rufus Clyde. Don't come for the queen. Well, I've done it myself. I you did have, that. You have done that. I've done that. And so I'm going to sit here <laughs> yeah. on this couch since we're just we're talking and take accountability for that. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a big I'm deal. I'm a big person yeah. to do that. Take accountability and say, I myself have been a part of spewing transphobia because Wendy's those were masculine names that I was applying to her because she is a black woman that has mas- like masculine features. Mm-hmm. And so because I've done it, I've also been a part of displaying transphobia. Mm-hmm. And so my thing is anytime that you misgender a woman, whether they're biological or trans, that is a part of transphobia. Do you understand her frustration? With, I do. Yes. With the issue. I do understand her from issue. the TikTok video that she saw. Yes, because I was angry, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, bitch, why are you posting this shit up here knowing damn well that only females can menstruate and have fucking babies? Why are you fucking you doing that? Mm-hmm. But when I took the, the time to go back and, and watch it, because this is me as a person who's fair because of this the Libra in me. Fair is like, oh, I got it. And I understood then my then I was like, okay, I, I, I understood what she was saying. I don't agree with the snippet and the way that it was put to the public. I don't agree with the, the in the in the terminology that way, but I understood it and told her that okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. Did you understand women's biological women's issue with being titled cis? I I I've been listening to it, and I have decided that I'm going to remove that when I'm talking about biological women. I'm going to remove. From coming from my mouth, I'm not going to remove it like from everybody else because that's whatever everybody else has the opportunity to do whatever they want to do. Mm. But I'm going to remove that from my vocabulary talking about women. I'm going to use bio or real woman mm. for me because it's it's too it's there's too many real important issues to be focused on than just what you being cis and this and the other. But I understand what cis means. It mm. means on the same side of. Mm-hmm. The opposite of trans. But when did all these assignments come about? Like even with the nineteen ninety four, I am pronoun the fuck out. But that's not a pronoun. No, but though. no, but I mean like I'm pronoun. But see, this out. is the thing. But see, but see, but see, cis is not a pronoun. Right. No. No. I get it. What I'm saying is I was gonna group it all together. Okay. I'm like I remember the days where you were gay, bi, trans, mm-hmm. um, gay, bi, trans, straight, no, male let's keep or it, female. Let's keep it real, Jason. I never grew up in the night. You 90- were only a punk or a dyke. Them the days you was the punk or you was the dyke. And before a punk, you was a fag. The, the fag. I mean, people don't want to. Then was, you was the faggot, punk, or dyke. It, that was it. That's what it was. And so. And where, where did we go from being able to just say that to. Well, because. Cis, time, bi, well, trans, because, they, thou, because them. Because visibility happened. Respectability happened. People were occupying spaces. Non-binary. So now on your birth certificate, they want to say. You're non-binary. How can you be non-binary on a birth certificate? Well, this is just your identity. You don't adhere to the binary. You don't. You don't adhere to. But female. isn't this just? It's, is it getting out of control, and are we to blame for it? Uh what's getting out of control is the lack of of wanting to be educated on it and adhering to being knowledgeable on it and respecting. That's what it, we we still want to be in the space of being able to say faggot, punk, and dyke. And get to the same place that I can say if any of my friends identify as them or they just don't come over because I don't want to say they upstairs. You, do you, I just don't want to say you don't know they how out that them can come over because now if I say, hey, can you tell them to give me uh, the soda and they say, don't call me them, I'm he. Okay. Well, now I'm in a problem and I'm getting canceled. Yeah, but you. I'm but confused. Here, no, Jason. If this is why it's important to ask. So I, and I, I told you this the last time when I was on you. But when we first met, I said the most important thing that you can do is ask. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 I want to respect you. What you eat? When you're confused, how do I address you? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. When you're, because I've, I've been in spaces where I've been like, oh, shit. Me. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shit. How do I, how I do this? Okay. Yeah. Hey, sweetie, um, what would you like for me to, how do I address you? Oh, is she and her? They and them? Okay. Sweetheart, what's your name? That's when I'm confused on how to say they and them. Sweetheart, what is your name? And then you just call him Lewis. That's it. Yeah. Jim. <laughs> Bob. Fred. Mm-hmm. Richard. Mm-hmm. Caitlin. Bruce. 
you know right <laughs> do you think do you think what's happening right now with you speaking out because you did the interview with rolling stone you've been using your platform to have conversations about it do you think that jess's silence is speaking volumes to her standing in her ego or lack of wanting to take responsibility or clarify what she said i think jess feels attacked mm-hmm. because it did come off as a space of like because we did rile up the girls riled up they did we got on our motherfucker because we tired of it. Mm-hmm. We tired of people that we love and support. And there were so many people. I want to look in the camera and say, there were so many of y'all that I saw that that were my friends. They were like, oh, I'm, I'm standing with Jess. And when Tasha K came out and started doing all that, that trash ass shit to me and posting my passport and stuff like that and, and calling me by my dead name, which was, which, I, which I've shared with everybody but that my name was Timothy. It was at one point, but it's not anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, trying to do that to me Oh, I'm with her because, like, when isn't anybody going? Because we women tired of this. We tired of going through this and the other. And and that was an unwarranted attack from Tasha Kat. And she was grabbing for straws. She got four million problems that she got to try to take mm-hmm. care of. And, and any any click to help her make a dollar, that's what she going to try to jump mm-hmm. on. And so she was grabbing for straws. And, and, and instead of them seeing that, they, they saw it from a place of anger. Like, yeah, get that bitch. Get them. Instead of me, instead of listening and saying. Because we tired of the whole community anyway. Yeah, we anyway. sick of them. Yeah. Instead of listening to me saying, hey, 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 I agree with Jess from with that when the girl said that from the context of which I heard it. Yeah, yeah. But then Jess went further because her and Angelica Cross had words and then she slid in her DMs and called her by her dead name, right? Yeah, that was a but lot. But isn't that transphobic? Um if you call Angelica Cross Andrew. Angelica Ross. Is that not transphobic? Uh especially if that's something that she's not using anymore. Mm-hmm. Listen, um, we all know that Joan Crawford's name was Lucille Faye Lassour. We don't know that. We know her as Joan Crawford, and we refer to her as Joan Crawford because that's the name that she goes by. Anything else outside of that, she don't need to even answer to that because that's not her name anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when you start getting to the space, Jason, we know you as Jason Lee. If yeah. you come out tomorrow. But I had another name. You had another name. And I dead of that name and you dead at that name and it's disrespectful and there are people who still try to call me by that other name and don't i'm answer. like no that name he doesn't exist yeah, yeah don't answer to that and that right to be called what i want doesn't change because i also identify as trans but they see it as an excuse to attack the trans movement it's very important that people understand that transphobia like i said in my statement initial statement affects all women not just some, it affects all. Because two days prior to that, a, a biological woman was murdered because they thought that she was a transgender woman. But that's what I don't think people understand. The black women and black trans women are like the most targeted women in the world. Yes. And that's the, like the similar connection that I don't see why people don't see that. Well, because... Like even with issues like Roe v. versus Wade mm-hmm, mm-hmm. being overturned and other like progressive rights that women have earned and fought for that trans women are also champions of, well, like, why aren't we focused on those things that matter to the woman it, it experience? Is, it is all a a huge divide. And distraction. And distraction because the government is right there. And you think they're not, they're not online looking? You think that the people, that the campaign managers and the stuff are not online, ooh, let's put this on the ticket. Look at what's, go- what's going on in Florida. Ron DeSantis is the devil. He is the devil, but he's also running off the ticket of, I'm going to protect you from those trans people. And those he's gay tapping people. into the pulse of people who yes. are anti-trans or anti-gay, anti-gay. And, and anti-black. And anti-black. But listen, you don't see the anti-black because the top of the bill is anti-gay, anti-trans. And in the small print. Take the books out. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds good to us online that, that's, that, are, that are voters because I vote. There are voters that that actually see, you know, uh, this stuff going on. Like, I'm so he, he see, I need somebody that's gonna say that's gonna protect us from the bathroom. Yeah. I need somebody No, that's no. Gonna... I need somebody who's going to protect us from my kids going into the bathroom and running into them. And but all... but but that's the same of I need somebody who's gonna protect us to make sure them blacks don't get in this school they don't that hear my it like kids that. wanna get you, in. You wanna know why they don't hear it like that? Until we get to the point and the space where we can understand that you were born black and you were born gay, you were born trans, you were born this way. Until we get to that space in our mind that this was through birth, then we'll be able to understand that we're on the same front. 
But right now, people don't want to accept that because they're saying you were never born gay and you never was. You chose to be trans. You chose to be gay. So that shit, what you going through, you chose those. Mm -hmm. I ain't choose to be black. So anything that's happening to me because I'm black is because I'm black. And you like, nah, shawty, I'm trans and black at the same time, mm -hmm. not separately at the same time. What do you say to all the people online that are cheering Jess Hilarious on and saying, I'm glad somebody's finally saying it? Uh, I would say to them, get ready for the, for the election because you're going to be your own destruction. I'm so afraid. I was laying in my room watching CNN and I was looking at the Republican Party. We're going to have a Republican president. It's just between if, if it's going to be Trump or DeSantis. Because Joe Biden... And the administration that Joe Biden has uh, displayed, the people are not pleased with. Mm -hmm. You're not getting the people's vote. But I'm going to be on my platform pushing for Democrat. Oh, I'm going to be pushing it too. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Because I was in such fear looking. DeSantis is just a hair behind Trump. Mm -hmm. I am so afraid of Ron DeSantis because I see what he's doing in Florida. The gay and trans community, <laughs> the gay, bi, and trans community. Yeah. Are, is this small in comparison to all the issues that are going on in the world? But, and same with the black community in retrospect yeah, to like... But, the, but guess whose votes? Who votes they are really pandering to? Right. The blacks. Right. Guess what the blacks occupy? The blogs. This is why, Jason, it is so important for you to post stuff like this where we're talking about things like this because the division is unnecessary. And I get that women are in a space because they feel like there's so many terms and this stuff coming in and I just don't feel like women, biological women, there is no way that a transgender woman or a transgender man can take anything from you because you are here and you're going to always be here. Again, in the words of Jess, you birthed us. And so we're you, you are here and we will never replace you. There's not a war on you being a biological woman and being replaced by a transgender woman. We want to exist too. And we want to, we, we, and, and I'm one, I can't speak for all, but I'm one that has fought for rights of all women, especially black women. I did see a lot of the comments and people were saying Maddie has defended black uh, biological women forever. Like if, consistently, consistently, forever. You might find a. Some people have been introduced to black women's businesses because of me, you know. And I, I, I target that because it's important. My mother was a single black woman that's tried to, to do everything in her power to raise me and to feed us, work two and three jobs. So I get it when when there's a black woman, a black a black female business out there that's trying to come up. I'm like, come on, girl. I know I reach a lot of audience. I reach a lot of people. Come promote your business over here with me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's important to me because I've been in the other, in the receipt because my mother birthed me. <laughs> you see that? No, I caught it. Because my mother birthed me. Which is acknowledging Miss Mary and all biological women out there. But I, but let me, what do you think about the argument where people are saying, because, you know, Laverne Cox, who's been on the show, friend of the show, friend of Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, was very visible and she was very, um, uh, upset and you know very visibly crying and bothered by all the conversation going online and saying like our lives trans women's lives are affected by this kind of conversation because the transphobia leads people to killing us it, it does and this puts my safety at risk um what do you think about the people that are saying look here go the trans community just using jess as a way no, of propping not, up their issues it's not, it, it, doxing me puts me do you not see all that read the comments i'm sick of them i hate them i do read the comments mm -hmm. Doxing me is a part of putting me in danger, Tasha K. That's a part of putting me in danger. You know, why are you? Why, why would I have people trying to Google my address and find me? Even though, because I do own my home. Even though that that nobody's looking for that. Why are you putting people? Why are you putting this stuff? Information? Because you're hoping that a crazy. Because you're hoping that someone hurts me. Mm -hmm. Your 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 reasoning behind that is for me to be harmed. Why are you trying to be funny? We're living in a world where it is dangerous. Trans women are killed all the time. And I want to ask this question because I need somebody to give me this answer. This might be, this, this might go a little shady, but oh the fuck well, this is the Jason Lee show, bitch. And you know what it is. You can use that as a sound bite. <laughs> this might go shady, but oh well, bitch, this is the Jason Lee show. <laughs> if for years, 
I'm 45 years old. I've been trans since I was 17, 18. I've been trans since I knew what it was to be that. Mm -hmm. But I started my transition 17, 18 years old, 45. So that's what, 20, 30? Yeah. yeah, that's almost 30 years. Yeah. For that long amount of time, I have had people say, I could tell what a man is and what a woman is. I know what y'all is. I know. Y'all could never fool me. Right? Have you heard that too? Oh, of course. So when trans women are I've murdered. Also, I've also heard of men who indulge in the girls and say I was tricked when they're. They, uh, here we go. This is where I'm getting ready to go with this. Okay. So I I hear y'all say, I know what it is. Y'all can't fool. I can tell by the hands, the feet, the neck, the torso, the toenails, the eyeballs, the eyelids, the makeup. I can tell. I know what y'all is. So when a trans woman is murdered by a man and his excuse is, I don't know, why are you backing him up by saying, y'all need to stop fooling these men? But you in the, uh, the other breath said that I know what y'all is because of y'all hands, y'all feet. I challenge you out there that's watching. This is the game I want to play with you. I challenge you to challenge yourselves in some of the conversation and the rhetoric that you spew out. If we're so clockable and you know what we are by our hands, our feet, our voice, our necks, our torsos, our back, our earlobes, our hair, our eyeballs, our, our eyelashes. When a man is up there using the excuse that he didn't know because 99.999% of the time, those men that, are, that have killed us are fucking us. Well, they were looking for you. And looking for us. Yeah. And seeking us. So explain to me, just for a moment, how he didn't know. Mm -hmm. How can you use that as an excuse when all my life I've been told I could never be fooled? Men have told me you, I, I could never be fooled. I had a friend tell me that he wasn't gay. He, we got into an argument because I told him he was attractive. Mm -hmm. and he identifies as a straight man. And he was really offended that I was attracted to him. Mm -hmm. And as he got more comfortable in the relationship with me, shared with me that he had been with trans women and that he um, doesn't identify as gay or bi, but been with trans women and enjoys giving head and getting fucked. And what I thought about in that moment was, hmm, one, in our community, there's still a stigma with accepting and acknowledging. Wait. The way you feel. You know, I was blown. Did you see how I was I blown? know. I, you fell back. I'm not done yet. I went on to say biological women need to start providing space for their men to have the conversations with them that they aren't allowing them the safety to have. And I 150,000% agree with you with that, Jason. Because, you, because your community is not the bad guy because your man is going out to look for something that he, in his mind, body, soul, spirit, and penis wants to have, but you won't allow him a safe space to talk to you And about here's it. the thing. Women have the opportunity to go out there in the world and be lesbians, have a whole relationship with women. Can eat coochie eat all coochie, day get long. Get that coochie ate up mm -hmm. all day long, be in a nine-year relationship, and then get out and go be with a man and have a kid, and she's what? Straight. Straight. And they won't award a man that same opportunity. And it's unfair. And it's and this is the reason why nobody's gonna like this comment. <laughs> you ready, Jason? I'm ready. Nobody's gonna like this comment, but I'm gonna say it. We all play a part in the down low man, all of us. Let's do it. I'm gonna tell you how. You want me to break it down for you? Tell, start with my community. What do we do? The gay community. Yeah, we we, right. we live for the trade and we protect their secrets. All right. We we this is how we do it. One, the women won't allow space for them to open and have that conversation. Two, the the the, the guys won't tell the truth because the women won't allow them to have the space in those spaces. And the community shames and the, them. And the community shames them. I, I met Kevin Gates at BET thing. I wanted to, I need to say this is important. I met Kevin Gates at the house of BET. There was a, a, a podcast that came out where a trans woman was on there saying that she fucked yet to hunt. Kevin Gates was fucking her. And, and he allegedly. Didn't, this what she said. Yeah, yeah. She didn't say no alleged. She said No, it. for this show, because we don't want to get sued. Allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. But you could find the podcast where she said that shit. She said that. I wore her out. 
I wore her out because she said that he was fucking me. And she she said, yeah, he was he was fucking me. And um and she was white, by the way. He was fucking me. And, and he's like, wait, it's not getting wet. And I like, oh, God, is this, he's like, are you, is that a real pussy? It's like, no, I'm trans. You did all of that. I, this is what makes me angry. And they say, I don't hold my community accountable. Oh no, I tore her up. In, in her face or this on is the, on I tore her up. Okay. You did all of that on that motherfucking podcast in this climate that we're in, where we already public enemy number one, because bitch, they feel like, Women are feeling like that we are invading their spaces and taking something from taking them. Taking their men from them. And not just their men, but the spaces. Yeah. Bitch, you do this and you further go into the stigma of that we don't tell nobody that what we are. And bitch, we tricking men. And you go on a podcast and talk about this to a huge celebrity like Kevin Gates. I cuss, I wore her out. I wore her out because, bitch, this is not that, don't do shit like that. Mm-hmm. And you said that he didn't, you told him in the middle of y'all having sex that you were trans. The fuck? I was angry with it, this shit, Jason. Listen, I'm, I'm get hot about this type of shit. Because the blogs pick this up and they put this shit out because it's sensational. And you have just used your you being a trans person as a weapon against this man. Now I ask the question, bitch, are you a woman or are you, or are you, when and when, what time do you be trans? Mm -hmm. Because bitch, why are you being sensationalizing you being trans now? Mm -hmm. When it has something to do with this man and, and say, which I don't believe I wore her out. You know, Kevin Gates, I was at Hosby. He, them girls came and they got me and they took me back there and I hugged. You know Kevin Gates don't let nobody touch him. Yeah. Kevin Gates hugged me. Because he saw the clip. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hugged me and said, you got good energy. And I like, I, I like, I like. And, and you know, there was some trans people that were cussing me. I said, bitch, why are you always defending the down? I said, bitch, I'm not defending the down low, the down low man. I don't know that man's sexual. I've never touched that man. I don't know. Right. And I'm not defending him. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is protect our, our stupid ass. Right, right. For you over there doing this dumb shit. White bitch. <laughs> You know the black blogs was gonna pick that stuff up, and you know we black people not ready to have right. that type of. We- and, and when something like that goes viral, there's so many things to dissect. It's a white woman with a black man. It's hip hop. It's black culture. It's trans. It's homophobia, transphobia. It, there's so many layers to it. But we live in a clip, which goes back to Jess. We live in a clip. A clip. We react to a clip, and then a whole community is now talking about it. Do you think that? What do you want from Jess to put a cap on all of it? I really want Jess to, 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 if it's not me, to really sit down and just, because I I understood, but she needs, she, she, I would like for her to sit down with with, with us with you and somebody else, because obviously she's mad at me because I did reach out to her. And she didn't reach back? Well, she did. She said, well, bitch, you put, you left it in the, well, she didn't say bitch, but it was very much so, you let, you put it in the comments, so uh, that's where it said in the comments. What did she say? Because we've had conversations before. And and, and just know, I invited Jess to be a part of this conversation. Um, I didn't get a chance to call her right back because my attorney died and I had a lot of personal things going and, you know, she basically said, you took a position, just do your job. She thinking that you took my side. Yeah. Which I haven't, I've, I've taken bits and pieces of all the sides and I've agreed and with understood. some of it and, and there's some that I just don't and agree you with. understood like I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and invalidate any of the women's feelings and yeah. say that they, 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 they don't feel because when I hear some of the shit coming I'm like why the fuck is y'all doing this driving these women crazy <laughs> right like why are y'all but like you I'm also not saying sis anymore no because like, I shit. did see from the women who follow us they're tired of I, that. I'm, not, I'm not yeah I'm not it's okay I'm let it go biological real woman fuck it before we move on to the next part, is there anything you want people to understand about the trans experience, the trans movement, the challenges within the community, and how we could all embrace being one and just working together for the greater good of all of our? I movement? think we need to further. We we really need to dive into trying to be knowledgeable on things, you know, and and understand that trans people are your sisters, your brothers, are your family members, or whatever, and you know. And we're not trying to replace or erase because it's impossible to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want people to know that's watching me that I am always on the side of what's logical. Mm-hmm. And you can be trans and logical, and you can be biological and logical. It's just a matter of like 
thinking about humanity and like I even say when it comes to marriage equality, why are you worried about who I married? Right. Worry about your divorce and your marriage or whatever. Like, don't worry about who I love. Right. Well, I love you. I love you too. Okay. And I'm so sorry that we had a, a, a period of time that we didn't talk. Oh, don't worry. It was your fault. So, <laughs> now you it's now you it's can't. Now it's time for some games. <laughs> Let's play a game. Okay. All right, well, listen, everybody knows here at the Jason Lee Show, we like to, you know, sip a little cappuccino, but here's where all the tea gets spilled. It's oh, in the game. Oh, here games. we go. This first game is called Name Drop. <laughs> now, this is a really simple game. I'm going <laughs> to put somebody up on the screen, and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. All it right, could be a on. funny story. All right, let's go. Okay. Don't think about it now, though. Oh, I'm not. Okay, the first name. Tasha K. Gutter Snipe. What is that? A low... Dirty, foot dragon, bald head, scaly wag, tied, late, dusty, dirty scumbag. Mm. That's how you feel? With funny looking motherfucking kids. <laughs> and she runs over her husband. Do you think she's hiding money from Cardi B? Yes. Do you want Cardi to find it all? All of it, every dime. Because I'm going after some of it too. You know, she, I, I don't know if I've ever said this, but she went and suggested that I had AIDS. Well, that's what. And said I was on cocaine and heroin. And even though none of that's true, it was like the headache of suing somebody was just, but, I was like, whatever. So what? But now if she don't got nothing. So what? But what if, what if it was? Should I sue her for her YouTube channel? Mm. It's dead anyway. Okay, the next person. Kiki Palmer. I love Kiki. Kiki is amazing. I saved Kiki. She'll tell you the story behind the scenes. I saved Kiki from something. I called what? her. Somebody had her. Uh, she was going to a booking. And I had seen that something was online saying that uh, they had gave out her personal information. And I called. I text her. I was like, sister, have you seen this? And she canceled her booking over well, her, where she was staying. Because they was plotting. I don't know what they were doing, but I, def I sent it to her. And she, I love her. Did you text her and tell her... Um... If she danced with Usher, she was going to get in trouble? Mm-mm. Wasn't that nonsense? That was dumb. She go home to her husband. And doesn't, doesn't she look great? She is gorgeous. I told Kiki she was here on the show. I told her she was a gay man trapped in a black woman's body. Uh, that could be true. Yeah. We live for you, Kiki. We live for her. Okay. The next person. Cardi B. I like Cardi B. I ain't even going for She's a Libra. She's like me. We share a lot of the same things. The same way that we respond, you know, there's there's a lot of times that I feel like that she shouldn't respond to stuff online as she do. Uh -huh. I do it too. That's, <laughs> That's a Libra, a Libra thing. thing. Mm -hmm. But also, you both are very extroverted online, but both very introverted in real life. Yes, I, we, you know, I don't go nowhere. Is you, this, Libras hate people? No, we don't hate people. We just ain't got, if, if it's not no money involved while we're there. Right. You've invited me to so many things, I'd be like, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Only private, only private stuff. Not the things that will get us in trouble. You saw recently she threw the microphone at the fan who threw the water. She had every right her. to do that. That's what I said. Bust a bitch. You throw you hit me. You throw anything at me, bitch. I'm coming. I'm having my security guard bring me down this so I can put my foot in your motherfucking ass. My. I'll never forget the day I was on Facetime with T.S. Madison and she pulled a 38 or something. Oh, out. No, I pulled a Uzi out. She pulled some out of titty. It was oh that one, and then yeah. I went and got my chopper. Yeah. Yeah. You know you can carry a firearm in, in Florida now without any permit? I, I, I'm, I'm, it's a house down there that, that I, my mother's house. Oh, Miss Mary. Yeah, my mother's house. We own that. Ms. Mary. I keep firearms there. Oh. So I don't have to travel with any. Got it. Safer that way. Yes. Okay, this next person. We talked about her earlier. Gabrielle Union. I love Gabrielle Union. And I love Gabrielle Union because the way because she is who she is, and I love the way that they love on Zaya. And it's so important that we see what her and and Dwayne Wade are doing because even though it ruffles feathers in our community, that's what unconditional love looks like. Mm -hmm. What do you think about when they try to say Dwayne Wade is gay? Um, that is that is projecting things because they've never really seen a man embrace um, his feminine his, side. His feminist side, or they've never seen. It's, everything is gay now. Yeah. You can't eat a banana. You can't smoke hookah. You can't smoke Santana hookah. Santana said if you smoke hookah, you gay. Not love Santana. You can't smoke no hookah. You can't even wipe your ass no more. Saucy Santana had me questioning myself smoking hookah last night. But you gay though, ain't you? No, but still, like now I'm like afraid to suck it in public. I suck it in public. I have. Me too. Mm. I'm going to suck it tonight. 
God be the glory. Suck it good, too. Oh, my God. Hi, y'all. I'm talking about hookah, girl. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. This- but I love I, but I love Gabby. Yes. And I, and I, 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 I <laughs> applaud Gabby for everything that they're doing in the family, in their family. It's mm-hmm. important. It's We need to see examples. What's the visibility We thing haven't again? seen examples yeah. of it. That's why it looks so weird. Yeah. Mm. All right. This next person we talked about earlier as well. Icon RuPaul. Oh, God. That's mother. That's mother. I love her. If I want to aspire to be like any homosexual, mm-hmm. that's those are the footsteps that I want to walk in with. Is RuPaul like that old bougie gay that's like above it all? No, RuPaul is really banshee. Really? RuPaul really, but she you'll never know it because she's private. Right. RuPaul is banshee. I love it. Banshee and rich as fuck. Can you t- can you put RuPaul on the Hollywood Unlocked? I will. Okay, thank you. I'll see her. S- oh shit. You gonna see her where you saw Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> These NDAs got you fucked up. This is, a, <laughs> this is a problem when people tell me who talks for a living. When they give me an NDA, I'm like, oh, I talk for a living. But I do try to adhere to the NDA. You did pretty good today with the Beyonce one. I didn't never shot no visuals. Right. I met Beyonce. Allegedly. All right, this next person, Nicki Minaj. I love Nicki Minaj. I love Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna always and forever love Nicki Minaj. Always. I actually was talking to her the other day, and and actually we were texting. I t- I was supposed to talk to her to see what she was was she busy this week while I was here. I asked you to help me piece it up with her. You refused to help. I didn't refuse to help. I just said, "Girl, now you know." The thing about it is, I've said so many times in different interviews that she's iconic, she's legendary. She's... But you've also said naughty things. Whoa, because and I, you, you've said naughty things. I'm a troll. No, Jason, you've said then don't troll her. You said naughty things, and I don't call you. I've actually called you on the phone. Like, now, why you did? That? Okay, so here's the deal. In my commitment to you, her friend, and to her right now on the show, I will never troll Nicki Minaj again. Thank you. No more jokes. No more. Thank you. Shade. None of that. Thank you. Can you tell her? Can you try to help us piece it up? <laughs> just, just, just be like Jason, because she gonna see the clip. Can y'all run this to Nicki, please? Nikki, I'm telling another friend. That Don't they, be fucking with her. Stop fucking I'm with not. that lady. When she did Queen's Court, did you think that it should have been you in the commercial set of Serena Williams on? Uh, you mean Queen's? Queen's Radio. You, you messy. No, bitch. What? Because if that cape would have turned around and it was you and not Serena, the kids would have fell out. It's okay, but when the commercial came out when I was on there, it was good. It I've was been great. On, I've been on. You were great on the show. Yeah, I love her because we have a natural energy with each other. Should you have been her co-host? You're not a co-host. I could be a co-host. I think you'd be a phenomenal co-host. But my, I would go on Queen's Radio if you were the co-host. Here's the thing. She would never have me on Here's that. the thing, Jason. My schedule won't allow me to actually too busy. sit in one spot. But she don't do like every week. Mm-mm. I think of y'all two together. Oh, I love her. Baby, it, it we'll would be on there tanned it up. It would, it would, it be, would be iconic. It would be crazy. Yeah. I would tune in. I, Jason Lee, would tune in and promote Queen Radio if you were a co-host. I love her. And I we've talked about that before. Okay. And if you want me as a guest, you just let me know. <laughs> you trying to trap me up. That's my girl. I'm a Nikki. Eventually. I'm a Nikki listen, fan. Listen, Nikki I don't can know. get mad at you and, and, and be all right. No, Tasha K says she talked to her. This is what Tasha K says. She said, I talked to Nikki Minaj and she said that he's obsessed with me and I will never, ever talk to that man. Oh. Do you believe that? I don't know. I don't because I don't know the conversations that they've okay. had. Okay. Well, hey, Nikki, um, TS is going to call you so we can all have lunch. Bitch. Okay. Hi, Nikki. Oh my God. <laughs> this next person. Y'all could have used a better picture. Than I didn't choose that picture. Uh, you know what? Even with me, even with us not fucking with each other, y'all could have used a better picture than. Why well, she looked is, like let me she tell was you on something. the way to a baptism in she Alabama? Was, you know what? That picture. She was actually pregnant. Was she? That's what she told me. You see that lick in her hand? Is that a gold tooth or a gap? It's a gold teeth. She oh. was pregnant during that time. I think it was. She told me she was pregnant right there. Oh really? Kaya is the cookout auntie. Yeah. That cuss everybody out, talk about everybody, and messy. Mm. Okay, this next She person. look nice, though. Mm. Oh, icon. I love Laverne because Laverne can come and articulate things in a way that I can't. But I do think that each each one of us occupies a space on the in the trans conversation where how we reach people. Laverne is very 
demure and very educated and very sophisticated. I'm very, fuck you, bitch, kiss my ass, suck my dick, and I'm going to tell you how to fry some fucking chicken, bitch. And it's the, pretty much the same message. Yeah, but it's just... The delivery. The delivery. Yeah. But Laverne is not going to, she's not going to get in that space like that. Yeah. And and here's Laverne was crying because Laverne ain't, Laverne, she not built like that to take all that stuff. Like, them, them hoes is online terrorizing me. <laughs> And I was on the end. You ain't going to whoop me, bitch. You know, let's not Laverne. Laverne is like, oh, God, what is going on here? Don't do that, girl. No, nah, I don't Because she it. deals with the white trans, too. Mm -hmm. I do, too. Okay. Let's get to the next game. This next game is called... Um, Erase the shade. Okay, come Now, on. it's really simple concept. This is where you may have said something online, and this is your chance to be able to erase it. All right, let's do it. Okay. The first one's from D.L. Hughley. He said, you got your facts wrong. I never said that you did say just look like a man, and you should not talk about anybody who usually gets facts wrong. You said, and you put an ad on it, real D.L. Hughley, you sure did put out to a mass of people misinformation about me. I am not the trans person that started the debate on periods or gatekeeping women. Um, you most definitely should fix that because I didn't even agree with that individual's uh, views. Fact check first. And I stand on that. Why would you ask? Here's the thing. You have a, a massive audience of people that, that hear you. I just opened up my phone before I came over here and two straight guys were sitting there uh, t talking about the whole debate. They put the Jess's video up, Blessings video up and put T.S. This is T.S. Madison under there and then Tasha and I'm like, that's not even fucking me. That's not even me. So Dio was saying that you're a blessing. Basically, yes. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, fix that shit. So you're not erasing this. Hell the fuck no. I really want to cuss that nigga out. <laughs> fix that shit. We don't all look alike. Nigga, you black. You should know about that. Period. We love you, D.L. Hughley. Like, yeah, we do. We fix that. He cool, but fix that. Put that. Sit, you, sit. you two would actually get along because he from the streets. Too. You sit that nigga right here. And that <laughs> other nigga, that fat, big titty nigga, Corey Holcomb, that always have his motherfucking mouth asphyxiated on the homosexuals, bitch. He told me, so you never going to argue with a man in a dress and a lipstick. Bitch, you know better because, bitch, you shaped like a woman up under them clothes. With them wide ass hips and them titties. And I, you hoes that be talking about something, I never go for men like I do for women. You bitches must don't know me. I told the AK-47, under my dress, bitch, and in my purse. Fat, bad body, big titty, motherfucking 56-inch uh, ass having 46 triple D titty having nigga. I'm still mad at you, bitch, for that shit that you tried with me with Pierre. I wasn't even fucking with you. I didn't even know who the fuck your fat, nasty ass was. And this coming from a fat bitch. Fat, nasty hoe. How the fuck you mean your, your manhood ain't gonna be challenged, bitch, when you get naked in front of that mirror all the fucking time, bitch, and you see that body shaped up like a woman, shaped up like a bleach bottle with titties. A bleach, like a Clorox bottle? With titties, bitch. Damn, how did he just catch a stray like he, that? Because hey, them comics. He was over there. I saw what he did. Yeah, and that's that bitch. I, I, anywhere I get a space to occupy where well, a motherfucker gonna see it, bitch. Because you had your people thinking that you can outread. You can't outread no sissy, bitch. At all. You can't outread no sissy. I don't care how much you, because you, you're gonna go to the main thing. Man in a dress, man in a dress. Let's talk about your motherfucking man in a dress ass. Bleach bottle built bitch with them fucking double D titties at the top. Fedoras are done. Take the cap off, bleach. Okay, what was the next thing, Jason? <laughs> okay, um, okay. This one said, "I know exactly who gave my pa uh, that person my old passport." Now, when I activate, mm -hmm. now when I activate to them too legally, don't forget I know who I share my information with. That passport expired two thousand nineteen, mm -hmm. just like business relationships did, mm -hmm. and everyone. Don't have access to my personal stuff, so it's clear who did it, but don't worry. It's illegal to do that, sir. I'm not erasing that. So are you going after the person who gave I've it? I've already began. For all parties involved? All parties involved. I've already began. So this ain't getting erased? I've already began. They did, they, they, they did, a, they did a post and delete, but I'm not. I, I, we saved that. That's, it's illegal to do that. 
Mm. To have, to be in possession of somebody else's passport. Yeah, and we shouldn't be doxing people. Okay. This one you said. If you feel some type of way, fight me. Why, no, why, sh- why would you? You shoot. I do. And if you stay in your ground in Florida. You- I'm in, in Florida or Georgia. I'm going to stay in my motherfucking ground. Mm-hmm. And don't, don't do. If you feel some type of way, fight me. Don't do pussy petty shit like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. This next one said. The person said, Tiz Madison, be quiet. You never could read. At a certain age, you shouldn't even be using sayings like, put it on the floor. This is comical. And you said, go read your dad's obituary. I did, because her, cause she had her pictures. Like, I would have read her picture. But in her bio, she said, uh, rest in peace, dad. So instead of you over here trying to read me, bitch, go read your daddy obituary, ho. I wasn't even fucking with you. Don't add me, bitch, if you got some, if you want to come for me. But Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. No, that's what Michelle Obama said. Bitch, Funky Doneva said, when you go, when they go low, bitch, you go deep, go deep in the depths hell. of hell. Yeah, and so, therefore... In the words of Funky Doneva. You should have, be, you should be reading your daddy's obituary. You should be mourning. This ain't had nothing to do with you. Don't come over here adding me talking about what I can't read. I, I spare y'all on the internet that, uh, that y'all think I can't read. Is that her dad in the photo? Could be. Who knows? I went and her, her profile was locked and all I seen her shit said, rest in peace, dad. The time that you over here writing this, you need to be reading your daddy's obituary, bitch. Or leave a note at his grave. Or go to visit, put some flowers on it. Yeah. Damn. Since we talking about reading. Jesus. Okay. The reason why I don't turn up on y'all hoes like I used to is because I'm in bed with universal pictures and, and, and all types of places like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm But I'm still deadly. Ask yeah, Kaya. Well, you said, girl, don't forget, I can get real low, too. Real low. Yeah. How low can you go? Take the cap off that bleach. <laughs> Bleach-shaped bitch. <laughs> Take that fedora off. This, epi- this episode is sponsored by Clorox. <laughs> okay, and this this last one, um, the person said, there are so many trans women they get mistaken for real niggas. Oh, wait, they are. And you said, but our dicks end up in hoes like you niggas' ass and mouth. Where's the lie? The most homophobic and transphobic women deal with the, have the most DL men. Tia. I'll state this again. The most transphobic and homophobic women are plagued by DL men. They have, they have fucked the most DL men or their kids end up being homosexual or transsexual. This is what I love. Um, T.S. Madison is so evolved that these tweets are just from the other day. Yes. <laughs> like we didn't have to go far back years to find tweets. Because you're still actively reading people on Twitter. I don't because they don't. I don't come for me. Don't if it, don't send for me if you don't want me to come. Well, speaking of come, yes. I'm just playing. We out of here. We didn't came. We didn't come. We done leaving. This it. Congratulations on everything that you're Thank doing. You, and now we can talk more regularly because I'm done being mad for the shady shit you did to me, to the person that betrayed you yes, in your you house. Know, you, no, you you told me you was gonna open up the show and say, "I told you so." Oh no, I wanted to end it with. I told you so. You did. I love T.S. Follow everything <laughs> she does. Bye. Bye, y'all.